The Mikoyan and Gurevich Design Bureau was one of the trailblazers of the jet age in the USSR. The MiG-9 was a decent aircraft, all things considered, but as they wanted to make even faster planes, Soviet engineers decided to go with a swept wing instead of the conventional straight wing design. And so the MiG-15 was created, a fighter of the new type, which quickly made a name for itself thanks to its excellent characteristics. Today we're going to discuss the ways you can play it effectively, as well as the tactics for the succeeding designs, the MiG-17 and the MiG-19. The MiG-15 was designed to be a counter to the B-29, the iconic American heavy bomber. That's why it's armed with large caliber guns, two 23mm cannons, and a single 37mm cannon. A powerful engine makes it very easy to get to 1,000 km an hour and allows the aircraft to shine in vertical maneuvers. The MiG-15 performs well enough to fight any early jets. You just have to force them to climb, making them bleed energy and turning them into sitting ducks for you to take out. If you run into more serious opponents though, like the F-86 A-5 Sabre, it pays to be considerably more careful. Engage them only if you have a sizable altitude advantage. The MiG-15 BIS is an improved variant of the regular MiG-15, which received a new engine. Thanks to a better thrust-to-weight ratio, it can easily best a Sabre in vertical engagements, and outrun most opponents if things go south. Apart from that, the BIS variant is pretty much the carbon copy of the original. The only other thing to consider is your armaments. Remember that your big gun was meant to be used against enemy bombers, so it might be quite tricky to use effectively when engaging other fighters. Get used to leading your shots a lot. But if you master the ballistics, you'll be rewarded with excellent damage. Even a single hit from a 37mm cannon can instantly wreck even the sturdiest of opponents. Furthermore, both variants of the MiG-15 have access to payload options that allow them to deal with ground targets in mixed battles. A bit later, the Mikoyan Design Bureau introduced a proper strike variant of the aircraft, the MiG-15 BIS ISH. Naturally, extra big pylons didn't improve the flying characteristics of the aircraft, but what you get in return is pretty great. Lots of firepower and a brand new ballistic computer for rockets. The MiG-15 ISH is capable of dropping a rocket right into a tank's weak point and then disappearing into the sky before enemy SPAAGs get a chance to react. And if you run into an enemy aircraft along the way, remember that vertical fighting is your best bet, always. Further down the fighter line, we find the MiG-17. Due to its new, more highly swept wing, there was a noticeable increase in speed, making the aircraft high subsonic. But at the same time, it became less maneuverable, and that's why we suggest, once again, that you should stick to vertical maneuvers. The aircraft inherited the armaments of the BIS variant of the preceding design, which means that your combat effectiveness will be largely dependent on your accuracy. It's worth noting that the Soviet tech tree also contains the premium MiG-17 AS, created as an export variant for the Cuban Air Forces. Its main difference from the standard model is that it can carry two air-to-air -air missiles at the same time. The MiG-17 was on the verge of breaking the sound barrier, but it was the MiG-19 PT that went truly supersonic. Two powerful engines allow the fighter to reach the crazy speed of 1,436 kilometers an hour, which makes it one of the fastest aircraft at its BR. As it has no slats, it's not a good pick for turn fighting, but it's a monster in vertical engagements. You'll also have an easier time hitting your opponents, as this MiG is armed with more convenient 30mm cannons. Another option that you have is to take a couple R3S infrared homing air-to-air -air missiles. They will struggle against highly maneuverable targets, but anyone reckless enough to fly in a straight line or to bleed too much speed is fair game. The aircraft can also carry bombs and rockets, making it pretty effective in close air support roles. If you're careful and engage your ground target at a high angle of attack, the fighter can easily damage enemy tanks through their engine compartments. There is even a variant of the MiG-19 that's especially good at doing exactly that, the German MiG-19S. It can't carry air-to-air -air missiles, but is still extremely versatile thanks to its powerful, high-velocity cannons. 
Even a one-second burst from them can destroy enemy tanks, and enemy fighters simply stand no chance against them. Finally, MiGs were also pretty popular in the international market. You can find these planes in the German and the Chinese tech trees. The latter also contains the North Korean Shenyang F-5, a modified MiG-17 with an afterburner, which significantly improves the acceleration and the thrust-to-weight ratio of the aircraft. You also get two air-to-air -air missiles, which is a nice bonus. Another MiG variant worth considering is the German LIM-5P, which received a radar for better target acquisition at longer ranges. It can be very handy in combat, especially when you lose visual on a target while sustaining heavy G-loads in the middle of a heated dogfight. MiGs are often considered to be among the best fighters of their generation, and rightfully so. And in War Thunder, you get a chance to test that yourself. And if you already have a preference, which early MiG is your favorite? Tell us in the comments below.